you have a lot of filming. It's expensive, it's unorganized, it's piled everywhere. Well, not anymore. Let me show you how I built my epic RGB filament walls. That's right, I said walls, plural. I have more than one. Okay, why shelves? Why not rods? Why not piping? I think shelves are more practical. You can put prints on them, filament, attach lighting, and cost-wise, it's really not that much different. There's not much of a savings difference uh, to use Schedule 40 conduit or any other type of piping. The shelves, these are laminated shelves. You can pick them up at any big box home improvement store. I'll go over cost here in a minute, but really, I think that these are just far more practical for storing things other than filament, like 3D gloop. We can store that. We can store anything on them. So I think they're just far more practical. Okay, so why RGB? Well, my answer to that is, why not RGB? Well, and also because we need a bumper to prevent the filament from rolling off the shelves. So we use some RGB light strips, and it keeps them up there. Oh, and just sit back and relax. I will have links in the description below as well as on screen for all of the things that we use in today's video. And we'll talk about the elephant in the room, the filament, how it's able to sit on the shelves and not absorb moisture, or maybe it does. We'll talk about that at the end. The brackets that I'm using are brackets that I actually designed myself in Fusion 360, and I put those up on printables.com, and we'll have the links to that in the description below. First, let's talk about the cost of the shelves. The shelves themselves uh, range anywhere from about $9 to $13. That really depends, of course, on the length of the shelf and the depth. These shelves and the shelves in the other studio that you're going to be seeing here in a moment, they are 8 inches deep, um, and the brackets that are holding them are about 7 inches deep. Uh, deep so it works out it gives us a little bit of a lip a little bit of an overhang um, on the top side which is perfect for mounting rgb on the underside as far as the number of shelves this studio is 12 feet wide studio b is also 12 feet wide so i used three four footers the cost of the filament it's about one roll of polymaker Polylite PLA Pro, and I use the Polylite PLA Pro because it is a much stronger PLA. Um, it doesn't need to be outdoors, right? So we don't have to worry about the glass transition temperature. But the PLA Pro is a little bit similar in mechanical characteristics or properties uh, like PETG. So it's going to be relatively strong, um, easy to print, and, uh, and it's got a little bit of a flex. So it doesn't crack and just snap like traditional PLA. It's going to have a little bit of a give, a little bit of a flex to it. Not much. Um, but enough that it makes it a really, uh, I, I would say, the superior filament for printing something like shelf brackets. The Polymaker Polylite PLA Pro is $24.99, and that works out to about $19.99 to print 10 of them because they're about 80 grams or so, a little bit more than 80 grams uh, per bracket, and that makes each bracket about $1.99. Now, you can get cheaper brackets. You can get metal ones and things like that at the big box stores, but hey, well, we're a 3D printing channel, so we're 3D printing things, so there you go. And maybe you have some Polylite PLA Pro laying around. Use that. Each bracket sliced up is about an hour and 40 minutes or so to print. I did print these brackets on three different machines. I printed them on the Bamboo X1 Carbon, the Bamboo P1S, and I printed them on the Cheaty Tech X Plus 3, which has been a fantastic machine, and there's some content coming about that really shortly. Now, the big cost behind us is the RGB. I use Philips Hue, and matter of fact, I'm going to turn this off here, and I'm going to go back to regular lights. There we go. I'm using Philips Hue RGB light strips, um, as well as light bulbs uh, here in the studio, and they can get a bit expensive. I'm using a starter kit, a light strip, and an extension. The starter kit comes with a hub, and it's necessary for them to communicate. So that's about $130. Then the second light strip is about $99, and the extension, which is about a 3.3 or 3.5 foot extension, it's about $35 or $39. So it can add up, and there are other options out there uh, for doing RGB lights. I chose Philips Hue because they integrate really easily into the stream tools that we use called Lumia Stream, and uh, there are, like I said, other brands out there that do integrate. Um, I just found that these worked out really well for us, uh, but they are a little bit on the higher end or higher price side. But go out there, um, if you don't want Philips Hue, go out there and find a, a lesser expensive option or one that works for you. Okay, now that we got costs out of the way, let's begin. So the first thing that we're doing here is we got to move the printers out of the way. 
These machines may or may not stay here on the bench. This is our Studio B. This is where we're going to be doing uh, a lot of uh, filming uh, for, our, for our YouTube content. We'll do some live streams from, uh, from here as well. I wanted this row of shelving about 24 inches down from the ceiling. That would accommodate uh, larger prints that we're going to have on display from our community. Um, as a matter of fact, if you want to send something to us, to the LM Show, that's printed, crafted, made, painted, whatever, and you want it to be in every single one of our YouTube videos that we create, send it to us, loyalmoses.com. There's a, there's a shipping safe address there. Uh, as long as it's family-friendly, as long as it's a craft, it's something you made, uh, yeah, we'll include it in the content that we make. We, wanna, we want this Studio B to represent our community. So send something. We'd love to have it. I used a six-foot level, and I started at that one mark on one side that's about 24 inches down, and I just carried that line all the way across the wall. Now, if you have a helper with you, you could snap a string line, um, or you could go and measure 24 inches all the way across down for every stud. You could do it however which way you want. Um, I have a six-foot level handy, and so I just use that. Using a regular stud finder, I mark the center of each stud across all studs on that back wall. Uh, if you're in the United States, studs are about 16 inches on center. And uh, I think now that I'm sitting here recalling this, I think I'm going to uh, use about 10 brackets is what it is. And so then I grabbed a two-foot level, and I marked a vertical line, a plumb line, on each one of those so to make things a little bit quicker so I don't have to check plumb on every single bracket when I attach it to the wall. I used one and three quarter inch star drive screws, two of them. The model's actually designed for that size of screw, like a number eight, and there's two per. So you look across that wall, it's about 16 to 20 of them is what I'll use. You can pick up a box of about 100 or 100 plus of those for about maybe $10. Um, or, of course, you could grab just what you need so you don't have extras. So once you have it matched or, or flush against that line, just drive those two screws in. But be very careful that you don't overdrive them and crush that PLA. Depending on how many top layers you have or how many walls and, of course, how much infill. And depending on what kind of uh, driver you're using, um, you could easily crush it. So just make sure it's nice and snug and tight. Uh, but obviously, don't drive it until you're at crunch. If you're still here and you're still watching, well, maybe that means you like the video. We'd love to have a like and we'd love to have you subscribe. Click the button right down there. Subscribe, like, click them. Thank you so much. Our studs here in the United States are 16 inches on center. Four foot divided by 16 inches is three. So it means that the end of the shelves are going to rest naturally right in the middle of those shelf brackets. And that's how I design them. We attach the shelves with double-sided sticky tape. Actually, it's Gorilla brand double-sided sticky tape. We use whatever brand you want. And that just keeps the shelves from being able to slide around and move. That stuff's actually pretty strong. Sticks to that PLA Pro pretty well and to that shelving pretty nicely. The Philips Hue light strips have a self-adhesive backing. Peel that off and lay that down. On the underside, it gets a little bit trickier. You kind of have to uh, uh, make sure that it's, the surface is really clean um, or the weight of the lights are going to want to pull down and pull the lights off the shelves. Um, but we went ahead and attached those using the self-adhesive strip. And then on the underside, I did use uh, some more of that double-sided sticky tape, the Gorilla Tape. And as you can see, the Philips Hue light strip acts as a bumper, which prevents your filament from rolling off. The really nice thing about using a Philips Hue light strip underneath as the bumper is it really adds a lot of light to the filament and really makes that filament pop on the shelf. And there you have it. I think it looks pretty darn great. Look at that. And because it's RGB, we get to control the lights. So we get to turn them on. We get to turn them off. We get to switch modes. We can hit this button. We can switch back to this, right? So this is Studio A. We turn them off. We'll turn them back on. But we get to control the lights, and I can do that with the Stream Deck buttons here. Or you can actually use uh, your phone app and the Philips Hue app to control your lights. Now, back to that elephant in the room. Why is my filament not ruined? Well, I live on a mountain. We have relatively low humidity throughout the year. And that ranges from the teens to about the low 30s, depending on the time of the year. And of course, filament does absorb moisture, but with PLAs and PTGs is not enough up here on the mountain to be concerned with. Now, ASAs, nylons, polycarbonates, things like that, yes, those do absorb filament. If we, li if we leave those out, then uh, we have to dry them. And in fact, we use a fixed dry filament dryer, and that's what we've been using recently. Fixed dry was very kind and sent us over one. I'll probably have a B-roll picture of that kind of going right now. But uh, if you're interested in that, I'll have an uh, affiliate link uh, down below. So go check it out. Now, 
If you're interested in building your own filament wall and you're interested in doing it with shelves and you're interested in doing it with my brackets, then let me know. Join our Discord. You can post pictures there, and I'd love to see your filament wall, and I'd love to see the progress. This video is generously sponsored by our YouTube channel members. If you'd like to support our channel and be included in every single video that we make, we would love to invite you to click that join button down below. Thank you to VPS Data, Captain Jerbear91, Sir Will 3D, Joel Finn, Brandon0109, The Waste in Time, Cam Nicholas, Luppy Leptonium, The Cinzia, Patrick W3D, Rip Artist, Free Dog Knight, Cetral, Your Betty Denek, Buddha 3D, and Jedi Spidey. Thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next one.